before i would get annoyed that let's say you tend to put stuff in different places so like you will have your wallet here books here rackets over here don't do this don't whatever the internet normally i would annoy but i i get that urge and it's like but it's fine like nothing's wrong like he's not doing it to make you upset like it's okay it's just so i just move it it is and it's whatever welcome back to the change over podcast my name is justin roberts i'm here with the the do side boss jordy mcginley <laughs> uh thanks to everybody who subscribed recently and everybody who's been up with us since the beginning uh we are we have been away for a while so i guess this is our first video that we recorded in what like three weeks yeah so we've we've been seeing a lot of the i guess the engagement and people like like some of the clips especially the Noah ruben clip so thank you for watching uh thank you for subscribing and then got some cool stuff happening on instagram right now i think jordy did some commentary on a on a match there in tunisia yeah so yeah we're trying to do some different things and hopefully get back into the groove now and just kind of keep building the momentum yeah it's funny because we <laughs> we kind of had this running joke because we've been like i'm sure as the, you know we have a few like obviously subscribers that have been with us from the beginning to watch every episode so they know that we've been kind of trying different things like trying different i guess styles of content to bring to people to try and get us in the algorithm mm -hmm. on instagram and youtube um but now it's kind of cool that like you know we post now we have the full episodes on youtube obviously you can go and check out all of our full episodes if you're new but then also we started posting the clips. So now we have a little bit of momentum, but we've been joking, Justin and I and Evan and stuff about this Compound. word compounding, you know, <laughs> like we like, <laughs> we felt like for such a long time, our progress was very slow, like with the, the followers and the subscribers. Yeah. So we kept saying, oh, don't worry though, it's, it's compounding. compounding. It's coming, you know? <laughs> it's coming, don't worry. <laughs> but it's it's cool now because like Justin said with the Noah, the Noah clip, like, I don't know, before we had Reese editing everything, so he does all the videos and he does the thumbnails and all this stuff. But now Justin and I have started to learn how to use a little bit sort of like yeah. we can like kind of cut and like transition some stuff now to kind of make some videos. And I've learned using a template from our editor Reese to to make thumbnails. So it's nice to see actually one come together, the Noah one. Mm -hmm. So if you're here from the Noah the Noah um, clip, welcome. And and thanks for following and hopefully you guys enjoy the content. And like Justin said about the Instagram one, like I just I was I just got back from Tunisia and I wanted to try to make a video for Josh, mm -hmm. who's my doubles partner who I was also staying with. But and we um, could play it here. What? Yeah, yeah just hey, read. <laughs> He'll play right here. <laughs> if you ever wonder what the semi final match of a fifteen K futures event in Monastir, Tunisia looks like, this is it. These guys come into the semis today after playing three and a half hour matches yesterday in the quarters. And today was the first day that the wind eased up and the sun came out making the conditions even a little bit more physical. I think these guys started the match trying to be aware of their opponents and seeing what the energy levels were like. But ultimately the contrast in game styles were pretty clear to see. I thought Josh tried to be controlling the rallies, tried to use his serve and forehand and dominate the rallies. He tried to come in and close out points at the net when he could. In my opinion, Koulibaly had the ability to get cheap points also, but ultimately the theme of the match was him extending the rallies, moving the ball around, changing the heights with his forehand, defending well with his backhand, and just really extending rallies and making Josh play with extra balls like this one on match point. Eliakim Koulibaly through to the finals in Monastir, Tunisia, where he plays Robin Bertrand in the final. But, um... Yeah, I just tried to make a video for him, and he ended up getting getting beat. So I ended up making a video for the other guy. But um, it's, it seems, yeah, it seems to be doing good on Instagram, and it seems to be a style that people are interested in. And it was pretty easy for for me to do. So uh, we'll try to do that. Um, like going forward, I'll try to do that. I mean, it's pretty easy for you to do. Like, uh, I mean, I'll teach you though. If I can get if I can get to a tournament, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. But uh, hey guys, quick break. Justin there from the changeover. I'm gonna talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver. And you can save even more when you use our code changeover to get $100 off the machine. 
back to the episode. Yeah. But uh, yeah. talk about the trip, dog. How was how was Tunisia, bro? Tunisia is crazy. Like, I traveled there, and travel was pretty simple. Like, I flew here to Paris. I had a like nine hour layover in Paris, so I just sat at a cafe and did a bunch of podcast work. Damn, you landed in Paris morning. Like, so you were in the airport all day. The, yeah, yeah. But I, I got there and I was like, Bam. how much money you spent in the airport on food? That just listen. I did not move from the cafe. <laughs> I ate three meals at the cafe. Yeah, I got to the cafe in the morning and I had all my suitcases with me because I'm flying two different airlines. <laughs> you have to go so, pick it up. <laughs> yeah, but it was easy. Like it was literally so easy. Like I got my bags and I went there and boom, cafe, cafe empty by the way because it's early in the morning. So a bad cafe. Good cafe, bam, baguette right away, and a coffee. You chose a baguette to start, not a croissant? No, no, baguette. Croissant? No, crazy. Baguette, bam. I on my keyboard working, podcast. I feel in, I feel in productive. Mm -hmm. Then a couple hours later, say, yeah, I'm hungry again. Bam, same baguette again. Then like a couple hours later, bam, say, you know, let me switch it up. Carbo loading. <laughs> <laughs> but then I took the second flight, got to... Tunisia and the first thing I thought is like these people do not know what personal space they don't is. care bro don't care like as soon as the plane lands this is what I don't understand yo please aggressive too hold on hold on when the plane lands right just don't stand up right away there's no need because everyone stands up and now everyone's in the middle of the aisle nobody getting nowhere like if I'm in the aisle and the person is next to me in the window sorry we're just waiting mm -hmm. like there's no rush but everyone's standing up you know now so eventually I get up and I'm getting on the plane and it's like rammed like this. No space in between us. Yeah, okay. I'm waiting for my bag. There's a man putting his head over my shoulder here like, yeah. bro, come on, dog. And they talk loud and aggressive. <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And my bags were the last two to come off the um The girls. Are, the car yeah. So I'm there and I'm like texting Josh, like saying, there's no way. Like this happened to me last time. I got to Indonesia. My bag didn't come for five days. So I was like, this can't happen to me two times in a row. And also... United was playing in that at that time. So I was looking at the score and I saw we we're up 1 0 in the 90 something minute. Mm. This is as I'm waiting for my bag and then Brentford scored to go 1 1. Yeah. He's already pissed. United just blew a lead and then my bag not coming. I'm like, this is not yeah. to the trip. I want it. But a good omen. Yeah. But actually, the bag actually came and then the airport was like one minute drive to the. Or the monastery. The, yeah, yeah. I flew there. So it was easy. Um, and then I actually thought that the beginning of the trip was fine. Like, once you get this, Tunisia is pretty easy in a sense. Like, you can go and eat, you can go and train. Like, okay, like, you have to train at random times. But, like, that was pretty easy. But what was hard for me was that, like, the hotel is in off-season. So the AC is not, they don't have the ACs running. So I get there the first night, and it's 11 p.m., and I'm thinking I'm exhausted. I didn't really sleep what on the plane. To I'm going to sleep, couldn't sleep. I slept two hours in the whole night. Then I had to train at 7 a.m. the next morning. So I train. Now I come back. I'm tired, so I sleep. I take a nap. Mm -hmm. Wake up, go eat. Um, but then I'm thinking, like, okay, I have to figure out how I'm going to sleep tonight, you know? So there's no AC, so the room's hot. So we say, all right. Now we're opening, we have a huge door. We're opening the door mm. to try and get air in. What's outside? Mosquitoes. So mosquitoes come in, murder me. I didn't sleep the second night. Right? <laughs> so the third night now I say, all right, I'm going to buy bug spray. I go and buy bug spray and I use it and it works fine, but it's still like very hot. By the fourth night, it gets freezing cold and like freezing cold mm. wind like I don't understand how for three days it's hot mm. and then for the next three weeks it's freezing it's cold Texas weather it makes no sense Change like that. and the wind is like insane winds like in, like it got so cold to the point where we had to like close in the door because that's mm. how cold it was like mm. but it didn't it took me like a week and a half to actually get what was your whoops in I think the lowest was 2% recovery <laughs> was the highest the highest first was week. maybe no nah, first week was like all below 50 I would say. And then maybe by the end of the trip, I was getting to like 60, 70%. Like, it's funny. The night before I left was the best sleep I had. Because your body knew it was leaving. It was like, <laughs> finally, I could relax. Yeah. But Tunisia, it was actually pretty cool. Like, the the courts are all, I find them to be very normal. Like, maybe one or two of them have a little hill or something. But, like, the courts are very normal. I don't know. Since you've been there, I guess, on job or oh, they resurfaced and they... 
put like some stands. It's nice. Like center court is nice. Mm -hmm. And then behind court one and court two, there stands so, okay. like seating. So you can go behind and sit. So it was actually nice. Like it was comfortable. I mean, only on two or three days, we had to go to the other side to practice. But besides that, like I was, I practiced a bunch at like 7 a.m. Like the first week I went out early, I lost first round. And then, so I trained for like three, four days with the doubles guy and did fitness and just tried to, I, I felt prepared every week like mm -hmm. to, to go. So it was good. And then um, by the third week. How were your days set up then? Because I remember when I was there and let's say you out of the tournament. Yeah, you have an option. Yeah. You play at seven or you play matches are done. Yeah, the so first, the, how, the how first, the days up? when I first lost the first week, um, James Davis is a doubles player from okay. England and he also lost first round. They, he played, I think they were the one season or two season. They lost first round. So it's just lucky that I had another like doubles guy. Mm -hmm. So like for two, three days in a row, we went to 7 a.m. train. Then by the, so the first two days, it was just us. And then on the last, on the third or fourth day, there were two other English guys that were also training. So we shared half the court for half an hour, and in the second half, we actually played, like, okay. points and stuff, which is, like, it's probably my first time being at a tournament playing doubles points against people. And it was only for, like, 20 minutes, but still, it was, like, yeah. well, it's not convinced or nothing, yeah. And then by the weekend came around, like, towards the end of the week and beginning of the next week, it gets empty for, like, a day or two. Yeah. So then those days, you can wait until like one or two rounds of matches are done. You sneak on, yeah. And then there was only one day where Josh and I had to go, I think on a Sunday, the first round of college, we had to go to the other side to practice. So you were practicing in that week at 7 a.m. Uh -huh. and, and then you're going for the day? No, no, no. And then I go 7 a.m. practice, I'll take a nap. Then I would either go to the gym right before lunch or right after lunch. Mm -hmm. And then I hit with James again or I hit with someone at the end of the day after matches, so like around 5 p.m. So I hit long twice. Days, um, bro. Yeah, it was long days. Long days. But long days I kind of got into a routine. And then, to be honest, like, by this, between the second and third week, I felt like I was playing a lot of tennis. Mm -hmm. So, like, I wasn't stressed to hit twice in a day. Like, once a day was fine because I, I feel like I thought I was in a pretty good place, like, with tennis. So I just wanted to do gym and take care of my body and that really? sort of stuff. And then also, like, it kind, it kind of gets to you mentally. You know, like, you don't want to... I don't know, like, you, it gets, you see the same people every day, you're sitting with the same people at dinner every day. Eat the same food. Eat the same food every day, yeah. And then, but I, I like the kind of routine, like, with the gym. Like, I, there were a few days that I did my workout with Dan. So, like, I had a partner kind of to do it with. Or, like, actually, this is something I want to say about Josh. He reminded me of you a lot in the sense of, like, very diligent with his shit. Oh, also, this is pretty cool about Josh, too. You remember in Franco's episode, Franco said to us that he um, he thinks that during tournaments it's a good time to work on mobility. So Josh told me that he watched Franco's episode in he, the last two months. He been on? In the last two months, he's been focused on that. So like that's, And he didn't even tell me that until this trip, which means he was Ooh. doing it since, like, I think the first time he did it was Rwanda, the child. Oh, yes. So it was a while ago. So, like, it's cool, like, you know, we make these kind of videos and our audience yeah, impact on somebody that's good yeah <laughs> but, I'm, no, but i'm saying like our our audience has been like mostly like tennis fans and people who mm -hmm. don't really play professional tennis but then also to hear that josh who's a professional player is also benefiting from it is cool you know i'm sure he doesn't listen to all of the episodes but like that one was that educational you know yeah. so so that's cool but like anyway i was saying that he reminds me of you like every day like he would go to the gym like, sometimes I have to go and train for doubles in the morning. Like, if I went mm -hmm. to James or something, but Josh would go to the gym mm -hmm. and do his warm-up in the gym. And if you know Tunisia, it's like, the gym is like, you go, breakfast is, like, let's say breakfast is in the middle, the gym is on one side and the courts are on the other side. So he would go, like, let's say breakfast, then he would go to the gym here to warm up and do mobility and stuff, and then he would go all the way to the courts, practice. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of every day, goes back to the gym for a cool-down, and his cool-down is like, stretching and stuff and or maybe biking first and then stretching and then it was freezing cold so the pool and the ocean was freezing so this, so then we did an ice bath yeah, yeah so the, for the first week we did ice baths like i think josh might have done an ice bath almost every day i did an ice bath for sure the first week and then like a few times towards like most days i did it but josh did it like every single time like josh was yeah. very diligent with everything like like you said routine i think it's if you get into a good routine, those kind of places can be good to go. 
Yeah. If you have a good group and a good routine, but then you also have people who are there in the lobby drinking beers and yeah, just they are literally just to play games. I saw that. I saw that. Like, yeah. No, that was cool. Like we had the routine where like in the day like Josh is doing his stuff, I'm doing his stuff. My schedule is a little bit different than Josh because he also plays singles. So the first week, I think the first week he might have lost first round in three sets. He was up a double. He crumped, bro. Yeah, he was up a double break in the third. Got broken, played a little bit bad game, got broken. Then he had an opportunity on the other game, but that's when he started cramping. And then when it came around to his service game, the second time he was like done. like mm -hmm. So then he ended up losing but I was saying that his schedule was different than mine. Um, so I was, yeah, I lost my train of thought. But the we ate lunch and dinner every night. Like it was Josh, me, Tahid, and Dan. That's a wild and group. Every single night, dinner. For three weeks, every night. And it was like breakfast, we sat in the group chat, breakfast this time, lunch this time, dinner this time. And like almost every single meal we sat together, the four of us. And then you see like after dinner, we would go, after dinner, go to play a few games of pool. Mm -hmm. And then you see the people, like, some people playing cards, some people playing Uno, some people playing pool. Mm -hmm. And then I would play, like, a game or two of pool and then go up to the to sleep, like, at, yeah. out on 9, 10, something like that. Yeah, and normally Josh and I have to go back and string rackets for the next day, yeah. you know? It becomes strangely, like, every day is the same. Yeah. Same people doing the same yeah. things. You know who's going to be where at what time. Sure. It's like... Yeah, if you can get into a positive routine, I think it's not a bad place to be. But if you start hanging with the wrong people, or you but that's why get think, lazy. That's why I think Josh did good. No because good okay, he went there the first week, and the conditions were a little bit slower than he thought, mm -hmm. and it was still hot when he played the first round the first week. Hot meaning like not cold. It wasn't like crazy hot, but it mm -hmm. just wasn't cold. Um, so he a little bit physical match, and in the third he cramped. But then he did. He was, like, very fucking diligent for, like, a week and a half. So the mm -hmm. second week, he got a little bit better. And then by the third week is when he made the run to the semis, mm -hmm. you know. And then he played three and a half hour match in the quarters. So naturally, you would be a little bit tired for the next day. And that's mm -hmm. the day that I made the video for Instagram. Um, but that's probably why he got rewarded because he didn't just, like, mess about. And, you know, you can get lost. You can get lost with, like, you're seeing the same people. Yeah. Maybe you're getting, like... For sure. And also your all the downtime to where you could be in your thoughts and think yeah. I came all the way over here and you now first yeah. second round and it's one week left. I have to That's actually yeah. what I want to talk about too because it crossed my mind because we him and I played for those of you who don't know I'm ranked about like four eighty in doubles, right? And for me at a fifteen K, which is what Tunisia was, mm -hmm. for me to really move I have to make Maybe the finals. So like if I make the semis, I move five or ten talk? spots. You hear that? The, no. humble, the humble brag. <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about was like the risk versus the reward, you know? Mm -hmm. So I went there on, I think I booked with Miles, my first part of the flight. Thank God. And then $400 was my second flight mm -hmm. to Tunisia. And then I think I paid at the end of the trip just over a thousand dollars for the three weeks of accommodation and to get back was seven hundred dollars. So I would have paid including the miles, like maybe two and a half grand. Um my results were first round, second round and finals. So you made how much money? Or you paid it into the I paid it into the hotel. Okay. I made it was nothing. I made no more than three hundred dollars max. I made two hundred dollars maybe. But I was talking about Is it it taxes or yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I was talking about it not from the money standpoint, but from the ranking yeah. moving standpoint. So like I moved from what I saw on the live rankings that I would move next week was from four eighty to about four fifty. So I moved thirty spots. Mm -hmm. I paid almost three grand to go halfway across the world. Three weeks to yeah, like three weeks and but and like I played well. Like we lost to the same team the first two weeks, mm -hmm. first round and then second round and then that's also another crazy story, by the way. But like, so then in the third tournament, we make the run to the finals. We almost won. I think if we, if I win the finals, I move up another like 15, 20 spots. So then it would have been a decent little mm -hmm. jump. But to pay almost three grand to have a okay trip, you yeah. move 20, 30 spots yeah. is kind of crazy, you know? Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. But in the, in the 
in the process, I feel like when you go to these places, you pick up, yeah, like stories and like yeah. almost like a new family. Because yeah. I feel like everybody's there, like trying to suppress the how much it sucks to be here. Yeah. So you latch on to other people and you get like new friends. And- One of the first jokes I made with Dan was like, I don't remember what it was about, but it was like, yeah, like if this if this trip don't do well, we just go in the ocean, we just keep swimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was it was fun. Like it was it was actually pretty fun. But um the story I wanted to tell was this is madness. I, and I've never heard of this before. So the draw comes out the first week and we played Pokorni and Wiscant. We get killed. So I'm thinking like for the second week, please just just help me out with a draw, you know? So draw comes out and we play two British guys, right? James Beaven and um, uh, what's this guy's name? Sean Hodkin. Okay. So I know their games. So I'm like, for me and Josh, I'm like, okay, I know, I know all these guys play. I think we could be a tough match for them because they have one ease. Josh is lefty. I have a big serve. Maybe we. We hold serve pretty easily if we get some breaks. Like it's a favorable match for us mm-hmm. tactically. So I'm like, okay, like a little bit of relief. And I feel like we're playing pretty good. So then the next morning the match comes around, I see a DM from this random person. Hey man, the supervisor is asking for you to come into the office. And I'm like, at first I thought it was like a better. I was like, what's going on? And I searched the guy's name and he was a player. So I was like, I sent the screenshot to Josh. I was like, look at this. Like, what? Like, do I answer this person? What's going on here, you know? So I eventually I answer, and he's like, yeah, there was a mistake with the draw. Um, the supervisor told me to call you, to, to message you. I was like, he asked me specifically. Then he showed me the email, and it, it's true. The supervisor asked to see me. So I go in, and I come to find out that this player was promised a wild card. Um, he was promised a wild card, but there was some mix-up in communication with the supervisor. So the supervisor didn't enter the wildcard team in. And because the team that we were supposed to play was the last last team entered. So, you know, okay, in a doubles draw, there's three wildcards. Mm-hmm. The supervisor put in two wildcards. Mm-hmm. So now there was six, there was 14 direct and two wildcards. Mm-hmm. So the 14th team was the team, was the team, team that we were supposed to play. And that was supposed to be a wildcard team. Mm-hmm. So then he wrote to ITF and he was asking, what do we do? Do we leave the British guys into play or do we take them out, put the wildcard team into play? So listen to what they did, right? This is like, now it's about almost an hour before we play and we don't know. So then, eventually, like about 20 minutes before the match starts, they tell us, okay, you're playing the wildcard team. So they took the British guys out the draw. So the British guys, the night before, they're thinking, bam, we play a match tomorrow and like half an hour before the match starts, they are taking out the draw. But not only are they taking out the draw, they now have to play a playoff against an Australian team to find out if they're the number one alternate now. I don't know how. Play a what? I don't know how, right? So Josh and I play the wildcard team. But why not just one out? You know, Hey, I don't know. That makes too much sense. So Josh and I win the match, right? Uh-huh. Because like an hour before the match, we see the English guys in the lobby and we're like, are we playing a match or oh, wait, you know? these men played a match for no points and oh. nothing just for they lost <laughs> they, they lost so they lost they the match. played for alternate position listen no man they lost right and then they're not allowed to sign as an alternate so then so then the Australian team I think got in and then they weren't allowed to sign to be the number one alternate how how does this make sense because let's say in the, the singles, ITF said to do that I guess so. Because let's say in singles, right? If I'm playing qualies in singles and I lose last round qualies, I can sign as a lucky loser to get in. Yeah. So why couldn't have they done? Why couldn't they have done the same thing and sign as? And a it wasn't their player? fault. They signed up for a tournament. They got in. They were removed. They should be the one first alternate. Yes. Simple. Twice. I Simple. We saw them in the lobby after they told us what happened. They said, "Mate, we had to play the well, like the playoff, and then we lost." <laughs> we lost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the other team got into the draw. Yeah. No. That's so <laughs> rough. So rough. But I was just happy to get out the first round, to be honest. I was like, dog, I'm not coming all the way here. And I'm lost the road. Yeah. Going through. Yeah. But the the team that we lost to the first two weeks styled on us, dog. Like, styled on us. Like, Pocorni was, 
I play dude side, slicing out wide to me every time. Mm-hmm. So now I'm starting in two feet in the alley. Yeah, yeah. This about to the second serve, aces down the tee as hard as he can. Yeah, make like, you look bad. Horrible. <laughs> horrible. We won, we won two, four, six. We won 10 games in two matches against that team. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if you don't want to tell it, don't tell it. But please tell the the Dan Martin, Toye, Jesse Flores, doubles entry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so... Okay, how do I even bring this across? So, like, Dan played the first week um, with Abraham to play doubles, right? Mm-hmm. The second week, he's supposed to play with Jesse. Yeah. So he tells Abraham, yo, sorry, I'm going to play with Jesse this week. Yeah. And it's now Sunday night. And, oh, no, it's mo- it's Saturday night. Yeah. The draw comes out Sunday, and Jesse's number one seed in qualies. But Jesse's in Barcelona. So, so he booked to come on Monday. He booked to come on Monday because he was promised a wild card for main draw. Uh, so I see a pattern here with this tournament. Yep, <laughs> yep. So now we're texting and we're saying like, oh, like maybe if someone pulls out before the draw starts tomorrow, Jesse will sneak in. Jesse doesn't sneak in. No one pulls, you know. So then Dan begs Tahid to play doubles. So Dan and Tahid play. Um. And then, yeah, Jesse doesn't come. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, it was just, it was horrible. Like, the the whole back and forth. Because Dan, I think that week also was like, there was a mix-up with him. Like, we're in the gym one day, Tahid and I in the gym. Mm-hmm. And Tahid is looking at the list. And he's like, yo, Dan is not on the singles list for next week. Because Dan had to play qualies at first. Yeah. So they were pissed about having to play qualies because that is so strong, such a strong tournament. We're like 700, 800 in the world playing qualies at 50. Mm-hmm. like, what is this? Um, they both qualified, mm-hmm. but then he was like, "Oh, I have to do this again next week, whatever." Tide is looking at the list. Dad is not on the list for next week mm-hmm. because Dan got into a challenge in Argentina, <laughs> <laughs> which means that Dan has to sit there for a week and a half, yeah, and do nothing. Yeah. But, so this is what yeah. makes the the story so funny because Dan is already pissed because he's not playing singles, and then he's supposed to play up with Jesse. Jesse's in Barcelona now, <laughs> coming, you know, <laughs> it was just such a. Such a back and forth, I felt bad. But it was like, on one hand, it was like very funny, and on the other hand, it was like very sad. Yeah, you know? so. But like, but it was cool because Dan and I actually like hit the gym pretty hard a couple of days in a row. Yeah. Like I had to ease off because I had matches, but Dan did it. So he did the full week. Like, but to be there with other purposes, like, yeah, it's rough. So numbing. It's rough. Terrible. It's rough. Oh, it's but amazing. another story too. Do you know Isaac Norti from Ghana? I'm sitting with him watching Josh's semi uh, a couple of days ago. And he goes, oh, what tournaments are you playing? I said, oh, I'm playing Mexico. He says, with Josh? And I said, no, I'm playing with Evan. He goes, Evan, who Evan? I said, Evan Zhu. He goes, Evan Zhu, Evan Zhu. Is his brother Michael Zhu? I said, no. He goes, Evan Zhu, Evan Zhu. Um, he go to Michigan? I said, no. He said, it's not Evan to go to Michigan? He goes, oh, Evan King. I said, Evan King. He said, ah, Evan King, Evan King. He goes, Darian King? Like, <laughs> go, you know everybody at Jason. <laughs> you go, no, bro, no, no. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, bro? So funny. So funny. I was the the last week though. He went. He made a final, a run to the final. Yeah, yeah. The, the last week was cool because first match we beat a wild card team one and one. Played very good. Second same wild card team as the no no third day. Wild card team. <laughs> but then second round we had a tricky match we played um Matsura 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 I think is his name Japanese guy like three hundred and Christian Tam but it was a tricky team because they both no no Tam won but Matsura lost mm-hmm. singles that day so he was like half tanking half trying but it's dangerous because you never know what's gonna come yeah. like, there were some times where like he's kind of a small guy. So if I serve pretty accurate, there were times where he just wouldn't go for it because I was serving well that day. But there were other times where, like, he was just lock in and the ball comes back four or five yeah. times. Yeah, it's crazy. But we um we had we were up a set seven six six five three match points. Oh no, five four three match points returned and and Tam came back and hit like bam 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 like mm-hmm. I think he hit uh, unreturnable against Josh. To me, he went forehand. 
Or maybe I made a return, and then we rallied one or two farms cross, my sort of push puts to win. Mm-hmm. And then the next three points were like, bam, bam, bam. Josh took all of them. Josh took the 30, 40, and deuce point, and it went by really quick. And then, like, we thought that the match was over there. Like, love 40, return, and we thought that was it, you know? Because also, to get to love 40, they made, like, bad errors, you know? So we thought, oh, it's just going to go away. But then he just lighted it up, and... Mm-hmm. But then, yeah. And then we started the tie break, played a ridiculous point, second set of the tie break. Lost it, so now they have a little bit of momentum. But we just stayed with it and closed out the second round. Then in the semi, it was like ridiculously windy. So this day, against the wind, I was just swinging out on returns, um, and putting up lobs. So I would lob like literally to the fence. The wind would blow it back in, mm. and then now we're playing like a rally where they start with an uncomfortable ball instead of them just coming in and you know, and then with the wind. I wasn't really making returns, so there was one or two games where I just chipped. I just held a slice grip, waiting for the guy to move, and I just chipped behind him. So then, yeah, we get to the finals, and in the finals, we're getting destroyed. Like, we're, I'm serving, with, like, we're trying to do the plays that we've been doing all week, like mm-hmm. our plays that we're kind of learning as a team, and they're just, like, returning lights out. Like, if I move, they're going behind me. The guy's taking, like, the do side guy would get jammed and he's not like pulling the ball. You get jammed, like push it this way. Mm-hmm. Like just playing like almost too good, on, like perfect on accident. Like he's just playing unbelievable. Out the box, like you yes. can't even prepare for it. Yeah. Yeah. So the only game we win in the first was a break. Like a deuce point, I hit like a ridiculous return. They pushed, I went return down the line, came in like two volleys, went on mm-hmm. the board. But then we go down a break. Three, we're down three love in the second. That's the first time we hold. But like Josh and I are like kind of laughing. We're like we can't believe it. Like what's going on here today, you know? But we kind of just told each other like we're being too proactive. We just need to like he's hitting targets because we're moving. He's going behind us. So we say yo, we are not moving. We're gonna serve and stay every single time, jam them every single time, and that's what we did. So like at three love, me serving, we just went body every time. Josh stayed. Mm-hmm. Held pretty easy actually to we held at like fifteen. Like the easiest game. Like I don't know why we just didn't do this the whole Simple. Yeah. yeah. Then we broke to go three two and then they started panicking. Not panicking, but they started freaking out because like one or two calls started to go against them. So that's how we got back into the match. We we're in the second set six four and then they just played too good in the third. Like mm-hmm. one guy was like two inches taller than me, so he was hitting aces mm-hmm. and the other guy was returning well. So it was just I don't know, I think Maybe Josh doubled once in the tie break. I missed one volley I shouldn't have, and Josh missed one volley he shouldn't have. So that's three points that kind of could have gone. Two for sure could have gone our way. The third one maybe, but like, I mean, that's enough to decide a match. But still, like, I was, it was good because I felt like the second round we played well to beat a tough team, and in the semis I felt like we, like, we could adapt. You know, like, it was windy, so on one side we, we can put up loves, on the other side we can chip. Mm-hmm. And then in the finals, we're literally getting destroyed for an hour. Like, not even an hour, like, 45 minutes getting destroyed. The match is almost over, and we kind of just say, okay, we're going to give them something different. And then it works. And then mm-hmm. we come back. To be three love down to win 6-4 is, yeah. is a good effort, you know? So, yeah, I left kind of... I think also I sent this to, to Chris, because Chris was saying, oh, you, you guys must be pretty happy with how like you developed over the, the three weeks but I don't think Josh really sees it the way I see it like Josh is pissed that he didn't win the tournament because mm-hmm. this year Josh is already semi the challenger he's one of 15 and like he cares about doubles but it's not like his life you know so mm-hmm. for me it's like I'm trying to it's it's nice to be have a consistent partner for a few weeks in a row and it's nice to be able to like I don't know we problem solve together and we like we played what one three nine matches and I feel like we grew in the nine matches you know like we there were a few videos like so like Tohi took a few videos from the first and second week and I was like ah, oh, that doesn't look very good we need to fix this and then we fix it so like you played how many matches we played first round that's one first round that's one then we played two <laughs> three then last week we played what four so seven yeah. sorry yeah sorry but um jet lag man jet lag jet- yo jet lag yeah it's seven thirty. I've been going to see what seven thirty the last two nights. It's past our bedtime. I shouldn't have put no scene. I should let it. I should have let it. Yeah. Work. But uh, I was gonna say something else just now. You forget. 
what was I gonna say? Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, let me see what else I had to talk about. Um, that's it for me, I guess, from the Tunisia trip. Unless I think of something else. Something comes to you talk about. Yeah. What's the update with you? How many injections in are you by now? Five. Well, I had two. I had one in February. I think one in one in early February, one at the end of February, and then I had yeah three of my possible four. Um, maybe we should put this in here again. Video me hitting balls. I've been able to hit the last three four days for about twenty to thirty minutes, or maybe like half intensity. So that's been good. It was a nice feeling. Uh, hit on the wall. Um, still pain. I think if I if I ramp it up too much, but being able to hit for like a solid period of time is a is a plus. Because I think when you were here before you went to Tunisia, I would start to hit for like two three minutes and I would just stop because too painful. So that's a that's a positive. The way I've been spending my time now has been. Yo, right, Lawrence barely. told me, Lawrence told me he's invited you to play dominoes multiple times, and you haven't Dude, gone. Them Jamaican says, man, them Jamaican man will start playing dominoes at eleven and twelve o'clock in the night, bro. But you don't have anything to do the next day. You have gym and what else you have to do? That's my business. Just go play, bro. You I don't want to be. House. No, you don't. You don't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. Go outside. You know what it is to start playing. You know what it is to start playing at ten thirty in the, in the night. No, I and you finish well. at four a.m. I know too well because then you make an excuse. You go and to I zip out. Two o'clock, I gone, and I'm up hosting our guests until four a.m. playing down. Yeah, yeah. So for me, Laro, if you want to play Norse, you know what time is good for me. We can start seven, eight o'clock, or we can play at my house at at ten. But I go into bed at a certain point because it doesn't make sense to go, wait, be up until four o'clock in the morning playing cards, bro. But anyway, the way I've been spending my days, um, I got a I got a fitness plan from our fitness coach, Ricard Cesari, who's here in Delray. And I've been killing the gym. Like, I've been taking the fitness very seriously, trying to get stronger, get faster, if I can. Uh, but not really. To be, is it? to be honest, bro, the last two weeks in the gym has been... I'm normally not like this. I'm normally a very much a, you wake up, you get it done, and that's that. And it's not much of a thought for me. I'm Like he said, I'm usually pretty diligent. But these days, like the last two weeks has been like, I get to the gym sometimes, and I I lay down. That's great. I just get to the gym. I love that. And I lay there. You get in a foam roller and go in on the floor. <laughs> like I, I get there. I've been using this uh, this sew right thing, this like, thing for the sew as you lay on it. I get there. I'm supposed to do it for maybe like one, two minutes. I will sit there on my phone for like five minutes. Nice. Then the pep talk, do mobility. Nice. Do it. Then I look at the sheet. And you know exactly which exercises you don't want to do. So I debate, do I do them first? Or do I do stuff I like to do and then suffer at the end? <laughs> so I had like a lot of like internal battles. I feel like I've been in the gym and like the last two weeks have just been... Not, I think I've hit a wall with it, to be honest. But... I haven't skipped any days. I've still... No, it must be tougher because you're doing it by yourself. Like, it's already... Like, fitness already sucks, but, like, the days in Tunisia that I did it with Dan was mm -hmm. way easier than the days I did it by myself. Yeah, I'm sure. It al it always helps to have either someone, like, a coach there pushing you to do it or yeah. people you're doing it with. But, yeah, I've had to do a lot of soul searching in that gym and, like, fight through. But Which I think has been... That's a good thing. But it is, like... Going on, I want to say 10, 11, 12 weeks now where I haven't been able to fully play. So, yeah. But I think, all in all, I think it's been good. I think I've I've progressed in the, let's say, the strength department, explosive department. So I think hope that all that stuff is going to have to pay off in the end if I stay consistent with it. And then off the court, I would say I've been journaling, I've been meditating. Have you ever meditated before? So I started I had an issue with like, with with like no noise. But I've realized I have a bad habit. Like if if I need music, like the hundred, you never you never sit with yourself and just and that's bad. But I do that for eight hours every night. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I've got into a habit. I started with an app 
it's called the Waking Up app. I guess it's a free ad for the what are people watching. Um, the Waking Up app, and it's like it walks you through the meditation, so you get guided. So it's not complete silence, but they kind of keep you on on track. I've been doing it for like the last yeah since I've been hurt. I kind of got back into what I used to do before, and after a few weeks, I think I think it's been positive for me. I think I've you start to get like a little bit of space between you and let's say your thoughts and emotions. I feel like at least for me I have like these like pre ordained like patterns of thoughts or emotions that just kinda happen. So like I don't know, if I see a certain person or a certain person says a certain thing, I automatically get annoyed or I automatically fall into like a certain cycle of thinking and I feel like the meditation has helped me kind of recognize what's happening without let's say getting consumed by it or like but have you been able to away. put that to use much because I'm I'm assuming like in the last like you said what 10 weeks mm -hmm. it's been a lot of like you go to the gym and you come back like I haven't been able to use it in tennis but I've been able to use it like let's say interpersonally so like if I'm on the phone with someone or like a sibling who num or uh, I don't know. Or for example, we go to the courts and the people that normally I might not be that nice to, I found myself being more like noticing the urge to be how I want to be. Yeah. And then like making a different choice. Cause I feel like a lot of times the things that I would do are like automatic, like, you know, you kind of fall into certain patterns with certain things. So I feel like it's helped me so far to feel more, let's say, detached from certain negative patterns or like even... But that's something that you felt like you wanted to change about yourself before you started it? Yeah. And you started with a goal or is it like you started it and then you learned this stuff? I just was thinking back to times in my life where I've improved as a person and that was part of it, meditating. And I feel like being consistent and something like that and doing it properly every day, I think is, it was good for me then. So I thought, let's see what I can get from it now. And I feel like, yeah, I'm not able to compete right now, but also not being able to compete, there's like hours of the day where you can get lost in thought. And like, I feel it, guilty about that. Like it crossed my mind sometimes and I'm thinking like, if I'm trying to plan for the podcast, I'm trying mm -hmm. to plan my travel, whatever, I'm thinking like, dog, Justin's just, He's just home. Like, he's just... Yeah. So I think the meditation has helped me to deal with this time better. And also, what I don't like about having all this time is, like, my screen time. Like, um, for a while, I felt like I was always watching something. I need to play oh. video games. Trust me, the time will go by real quick. That's more screen time. Oh, okay. like, you know what I mean? Like, I, <laughs> I felt like I was either always watching something, always listening to something, always. So I thought maybe I should sit with myself a little bit on like you know what's horrible about it too it's like, like we started a podcast which mm -hmm. became like a positive distraction for sure of when we we're on tour but in the last three weeks we haven't recorded yeah so it's like you're here for the three weeks yeah. and like at least the week of like miami we we're going to the matches and some of the episodes yeah. and like other weeks in between we we're recording episodes yeah. but like because i've spent a lot of weeks here like i spent maybe two weeks in dominican but besides that i was pretty much here for most of the year so, like, you had at least some distraction during the week. But then the Tunisia trip, when I'm gone, yeah. like, Ali's probably traveling. So, you have the apartment here. No one's here. And you're not recording for three days. Yeah. It's like every day is probably just. Yeah, so, like, some of those days I was, like, meditating twice. Like, once in the morning, once in the night. Like, trying to, like, become okay with not having a distraction. And just, I don't know. I, I use, use the time something productive. Or yeah. even if you do watch a movie or something, then do that. But, like. Let it be your choice, not let it be like a, a reaction. Like sometimes I just grab my phone for no reason. You know, that's why I thought. So this morning, guys, or I guess l r last night, I put laundry in, mm -hmm. uh, but I fell asleep at like 7 p.m. because I'm like, time change is still killing me. I wake up this morning to go to train. And first of all, I wake up at 4 a.m., mm -hmm. but then I come out here at like 6 or something, and I put my clothes from the washer to the dryer, and I put more clothes in the washer. Okay. And I come back. In the afternoon, and all my laundry is on my bed, dry. So I'm thinking like, oh, like maybe Justin needed to use the washing machine. So I look, and there's no clothes in the washing machine, no clothes in the dryer. So I text Justin like, yo, 
the man did my laundry for me. Like, this is how bored you are. No, no, it's just like I was. It restarts when it's uh, done. What? So, like, when you finish drying, uh-huh. every five minutes it will like restart for like 30 seconds and stop. Oh, okay. So I just took it out. Then I was like, it stops already. I might as well just do it. And then and you then, took it out again. And then I had an hour before I was even to go to the court and then to the gym. <laughs> and then it was like, might as well just drive them. I yeah. will say, I will say that the place is spotless. Yeah, like the place. That's a new habit. Not that, we, not that we were dirty before, but it's literally like a hotel room. Like, yeah, it's like shit is in like, like if if there's a book, like I have my book there. Yeah, I figured yesterday <laughs> it was like in the middle of the table, kind of tilted like this. I come this morning, they're all in the corner. Like. But it's like that, stuff like that. For the meditation helps. It's like, before, I would get annoyed that, let's say, you tend to put stuff in different places. So, like, you will have your wallet here, books here, rackets over here. Don't do this. Don't Whatever. Do the internet. Normally, I would annoy, but I, I get that urge, and it's like, but it's fine. Like, nothing's wrong. Like, he's not doing it to make you upset. Like, it's okay. It's just, <laughs> so I just move it, and it's, and it's whatever. So, yeah, I feel like I've been trying to work on myself. And the app comes with, like, a 30-day free trial thing. We don't. We're not sponsored by the app. Don't. What are you doing? Oh, help people, though. If they want to just 30 days. Okay, wait, how about we plug the app now and say, if you're watching. Yeah, if you're watching, sponsor the boys. Anyway, oh. hit me in a DM or something. I might send it to you. I might not. Dory said we shouldn't be pulling people's stuff. But anyway, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. I got to go home twice, snuck home without telling anybody because when you're from the Caribbean and you're going home and you tell people you're coming home, it's like, bring this for me, bring that for me. Then all of a sudden your suitcase is full. Yeah, yeah. Or you come, come with a new suitcase, you won't even travel with a carry-on. So I, I got some trouble from that from some of my cousins, sorry Miyoshi. But um, yeah, so there are things that I've been able to do that I wouldn't normally do because I'm traveling. It's like see some family, some my grandmother's 94th birthday. So yeah, man. All everything is blessed, bro. Can't complain too much, and hopefully, we get back on the match court soon. But that's my my little rant for the day. Okay, the last few things we will talk about. Um, so I trained with a doubles player the last two days. I got top, top of the doubles player, good. But we talked a little bit about the experiment in Madrid. You know, like so. I don't know for sure. Because, like, literally, like I said, time change has been killing me and my memory is already horrible. So, from my understanding, the doubles now is the second week. This is what they're trying to implement for Madrid. They're going to do it in Madrid. They're possibly going to keep doing it. But, like, doubles is the second week of the tournament. So, like, you would think, oh, like, it it makes sense. Because if it's the second week, maybe now the doubles players can maybe even play another tournament the week before. Mm -hmm. But... The rule is, I think, what they're trying to do is like separate entry deadlines, because there's it's a 32 draw. It's supposed to be something like maybe 16 doubles teams, 16 singles teams, or something like that, or players. Sorry, something I don't know, whatever. So, the doubles deadline has come and gone. They didn't get in. These are guys top 50, right? From my understanding, is what they would what I don't know if this is the ATP or whoever decided on it. What they were trying to do. One of the ideas were to make the singles singles teams have to play a doubles doubles teams in the first round. So that's already like, first of all, the deadlines is like this: it's the doubles deadlines first, and then the singles deadlines, and then maybe there's like a third deadline that's like, combined. There's a, yeah something. So that's already that's confusing. And then the possibly the how they make up the draw to make the doubles teams play the singles teams whatever but the, the rule is for the forcing s- matchups yes but I don't know if they're actually gonna do it but I know it was a conversation but then they were also doing to be a singles singles team you have to have played Madrid okay but it's in the second week so let's say you're a player in qualies or you're a player you lose first round they've now put two big challenges the second week of Madrid you know how in every Masters, like for example, yeah. so Phoenix was, after any of it was Phoenix. They're doing that now so that if you lose early, you go and play that. So who, if you're a singles player mm-hmm. and you lose early, you're not you're staying to the, for doubles, you're going to a challenger. So you're trying to set up all these singles players, but they're not going to stick around in, Monte, uh, in, in Madrid. 
you know, like maybe maybe some of them will because it's a masters, it's probably more money, it's cool. But like if they actually care about their singles, it's a good opportunity to go and pick up 175 points the very next week. You know what I mean? So I might just get ready for the French or whatever's coming up. So yeah, so I I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't think the doubles players are very happy about it. And then the other thing is like the the noise, like the the allowing people to move around and stuff during. So I, I don't know. That one is not really a big deal. I think they're not letting them be at the back. Like, you can move around the side, but you can't move around the back mm-hmm. of the court. So that's okay. But, like, besides that, I don't really understand. Like, I don't think the doubles players are very happy. And I don't think, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out. I feel like they try these things and then they realize that it doesn't make sense and they cut it yeah. out. Because I, you make the doubles players feel, like, unappreciated. And it makes the pool so much smaller to play these big events. It's yeah. Kind of rough. I think, I don't from my understanding is, they want doubles the second week because they want to fill the calendar, like fill the schedule in the day. Mm-hmm. They want more matches. Um, but yeah, who who's playing the second week of of Madrid? It's gonna be Senna and Alcaraz and Djokovic. And when you say second week, you mean like doubles is not four? I know they started qualies. I know they started qualies yesterday, so they played. So this this week is the first week. Yesterday is what? Yesterday is Monday. Yeah, so today I know Kobe qualified today. Yeah. So they start their main draw probably, I don't know, Wednesday, Thursday. Mm-hmm. So this comes as the first week to you. And then they yeah, just... exactly. So next week is doubles. Yeah. So for example, he's flying now tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Today, today, guys, is Tuesday. He's flying tomorrow, Wednesday, to wherever he trains because he doesn't even know if he's going to get into Madrid. And then if... He, or he's flying maybe to Croatia or something. Yeah. And if he gets in, he's going to fly to Madrid. But it's like... It's like uh, so much to plan for them now too. Exactly, and these are guys that are top fifty. You know, it's not even like these are not like they've earned it. Yeah, yeah. they won a two fifty a couple of weeks ago. You know, like they're yeah. they're that level. I shouldn't even do this. They've earned it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, it's I don't know. Like it's 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 interesting. And then another thing that I realized recently. This is what I wanted to talk about too. So, I have about hundred and. 25 points something around there and i'm 450 in the world so i was just curious one day and i, I remember like these guys ryan segerman and patrick uh to hatch yeah i don't want to push his last name so i was curious i was like oh these guys had an unreal like last year and a half they like, gotta be 40 in the world right now <laughs> so so last year segerman's first doubles win of the year was against us in san diego great win <laughs> Well, listen to this, right? Lakewood 15K won. Lakewood 15K won. South Haven 25K won. Tunisia 15K won. Tunisia 15K won. Tunisia 15K won. Monastir Tunisia 25K won. That's seven in a row. Seven titles in a row. Yeah, that they won. This is the whole tournament, not match. This is the whole tournament. They won seven tournaments in a row. They lost first round in Charleston. They won a 25 in Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. So that's... Eight That's events. eight futures, and a few of them were 25s. Then they won two challenges back-to-back, a challenge of 50 and a challenge of 75 in mm-hmm. Australia. So that's eight futures, two challenges. They start, the year they start in 2024 in India Wells, back-to-back 50K, and then they won a run in India Wells. Since then, they've won semis of a 75K, and they won a big, a big challenge in Mexico City. These are all points that are all countable because it's, been it's, months. it's less than 12 months. Yeah. They started in the summer. This man is around 130 in the world. What is it going to take for him to get to the next level? Because at 130, you're not getting into any big tournaments. And he's winning big challenges. They're winning big challenges now. Like they've won. Remember, bro. How many challenges did I just said they won? Four, five, something like that? And one of them is a big one. I feel, I feel like in doubles, you have to win like seven eight challenges or something like that something crazy it is it's actually true yeah because like you're thinking like i'm i don't know i I don't have his thing open like his breakdown open but that's at least four five twenty fives like three four fifty no (laughs) (laughs) and i think i can't do it with twenty fives and and like uh no no but they're doing it in challenges now that's what i'm saying i'm saying i'm saying they're gonna have to like but like, if you lose early in a challenger, you're getting like 15, 25 points. So which which they did at the futures. Mm-hmm. So like the twenty fives could also you can look at it as like a challenger, a not great challenger, challenger result, you know. Order. So like in theory, since last year, 
if you look at the 25s as like challenger-ish points, they've done decent at the challengers last year. Then they started winning challenges. And then this year, they, they've won one, two. Then they lose first round, first round, first round. And then they won a run in the New Worlds. That's 100 points, by the way. And then semi and then won a big challenger. So, like, they literally have to win, like, big really- challenges to get to jump. And then even then, they need help, you know? And, they, and I think, like, semis and finals don't do it as much anymore because they drop the points. Yeah. So. Yeah, bro, I think. But they don't have to worry about semis and they don't they have to win tournaments, bro. They win tournaments. They win in tournaments. Yo, they went 42 and 3 last year. That's crazy. That's madness. That's madness. 42 40, and 3. 42 and 3. And they started in the summer. 42 and 3. And they started in June. Well, well, Segerman is 42 and 3. And he started in June. He left school already? Is, is he playing for time? I mean, yeah. I think he's. Doing decent singles. Well, my app is close. He's doing decent singles too. He's like, I want to say he's like five, six hundred or something. It's unreal. But yeah. Unreal effort. And it's, and it's like so close yet so far. Like yeah. you have to win so much more like consistently. That sends us into the next topic, which is uh, Carousel. Same kind of conversation. Same conversation, yeah. You like that transition? Yeah. Um, Make it. So, so, it. <laughs> so he posted, Karu posted this on my tennis HQ. If you guys, I'm sure you guys already, I don't have to introduce Karu. He has a much bigger platform <laughs> than we do. Um, and we owe a lot of our plat- platform to him, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Karu. But Karu posted this about a week ago. He played a few challenges in Mexico. So he says, thoughts after playing challenges again. Tennis is so deep. There's so much talent. But the ATP once again has, oh, this is, has crosswords in it. Has effed it up. Challengers now have fewer points and tour events have more points. What's the result? It's harder to break into the top 100. A loser record will be enough for guys in the top 100 to stay. He says, tennis is not a top 100 sport anymore. Guys, 600 are beaten. Guys in the 100. It happened twice this week, which was when he posted this. Moving up and down should be simpler. A guy can stay in the top 100 going 15 and 25 in the year, and another guy can't break into the top 100 with going 45 and 25, even more, even more so with the points difference. Without wild cards to big events, it can be basically impossible. Look at doubles. It's been the same dudes for 20 years because it's basically impossible to follow. I don't say this for, my, for myself. I'm far from the level, but challenges players are getting the shaft, which is similar to what we are just talking about. Yeah, bro, I'm not sure. It feels... Not as extreme, but similar to the time when they took like 15k points, went down to 10 if you win a tournament, and 25k's went down. To, I don't know if it was 20. Like yeah. they, they tried to cut stuff and felt like by a third almost. And I feel like then it's so hard to let's say go from futures to challenges and then challenges to futures. Yeah. So I don't know if they will keep it this way. You think they will? No, because like. Okay, the doubles. What we just explained with the segment thing is it's that's ex- that's extreme. Mm-hmm. That's very extreme. First of all, I don't think there's anyone in the last couple of years that's done what these guys just did. Like incredible. Like it's ridiculous to win that many tournaments back to back from like right away. They just started. Boom, they were in yeah, school. Did that? Not not right away, but the cash and yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that. Not really. Uh, cash and patent, patent. Yeah, yeah. which is like yeah so which is what our coach tells me a lot of the time like that's why it's so important to find someone that you like playing with and whatever it can go a long way but either way like I was saying that the doubles is more extreme but the singles is the same way because mm-hmm. what they tried to do and we talked about it with, with Simon Fraun we talked about it with Kuru we talked about this this conversation a few times where like the ATP took points away from the challengers because they want to try to force guys to play up. But what happens is, is guys just come and play down, you know, so that's why the 25s have been so strong. Like, that's why even the 15s, like, Dan and Tahi at 700 are playing qualies mm-hmm. because their guys, like, look at, I don't know, Giles Hussey, for example. He's winning 15s back to back to back. Why wouldn't he play 15s if he's just tearing up 15s mm-hmm. back to back to back? He's going to, if you win a bunch of 15s in a row, you can move up to the 300s, 200s and play the slams, you know, but I like, He's winning every single one he's playing. He's won like three or four in a row, you know? So, but like, that's what you have to do. You know what I mean? And then yeah. it becomes so strong. Like, the level, the guys play down, like, the higher guys play down. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. Yeah, I don't know. 
I think they were changing. When that happens, next the, year? the higher guys play down, and the guys who are down don't have the opportunity to play up. You know. And then they say like we've we've made tournaments, we've given more challenges, yeah. but they really just gave more of the the high high challenges, which is yeah. for guys who are top fifty anyway. I think it's so rough because a few things like look at this. I got this email today from ATP Challenger Tour, and oh, it says survey. Yes, it says um, this. The following actions have been taken by the committee. This is like the ATP Challenger Committee or whoever. It is. I don't know. I don't want to misspeak, but seven Challenger tournaments this year have had the 2024 applications denied. Five challengers were demoted to a lower category, and six challengers received notice with strict improvements with strict conditions to improve this year. So it's like. That doesn't sound good to me. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I know they're trying to make a difference, but seven challengers that were on the schedule had their stuff denied. So that's seven challengers off the calendar. And then five of them were demoted to a low category. So that's like a 75 now becoming a 50 or something, or like 100. You know what I mean? So I don't know if they're replacing those weeks with other challengers. If that's the case, then okay. But then this is just taken away from what what would they essentially players players they've made challenges more challenges small and then they've added the 175 yes, so like, <laughs> yes. who's playing the 175s top 100 guys the plus guys 80 guys in yeah. Madrid yeah. so like I don't know the challenger players are just losing all around and then if the challenger players are losing they're gonna come down to the futures the futures players are losing you know what he's saying is true about like guys five, 600 beating guys in the one 200s like the challenges, yeah, they're deep, man. Yeah, the level doesn't seem to be that different at like twenty fives and challenges. Okay, obviously the guys who play challenges, win challenges, are, are the guys who are better at the twenty fives. But once you get into like second round quarters of the twenty five k's, those guys usually yeah. pretty much challenger players. Exactly. This is what I, I when I was talking to the doubles player today. Oh, I think we were talking about this yesterday. It reminded me because one of the things he said was like, I think the discussions a lot at the top of the game about doubles specifically is about um, they tried to make doubles more exciting for the fan base, mm-hmm. like more exciting so people buy tickets and want to come and watch doubles and this sort of stuff. And but like on the other hand, it's like do they promote doubles? Like do you see them posting doubles and that sort of stuff? I'm not saying that they should or shouldn't. I'm just saying that it's a fact that they don't promote doubles nearly as much as they promote the singles. What that makes me think of is like, perfect example is this video of Josh and and Elia Kim yesterday that we posted. It's at about 50,000 views, which is a lot higher than on average on the page. And people are asking to see more of it. And that just reminds me of like the conversation we had with Oscar last year. Like, do people actually want to see someone 700 in the world play? The video has 50,000 views. There's no one in the stands watching, Mm -hmm. you know? So, like, and this, in my opinion, is like marketing. It's like we, I made a video showcasing what I was watching and people enjoyed, from from four points or five points, they seemed to enjoy what they saw. Mm -hmm. And I don't know nothing about marketing. Like, I don't know. I just learned how to edit videos and you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and a lot of it is... I'm not no specialist. I'm not a social media guy. Yeah. Like I play tennis, you know? Yeah. So that just makes me think like if they, if marketing is done a different way, if they're like, I don't know, if the ATP or ITF implement protocols to the challengers mm-hmm. or protocols to the futures where, okay, if you're hosting the future, you're required to do a certain amount of marketing, a certain amount of, I don't know, activities or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. Like maybe then you know, there's a different outcome. Maybe then more people come out and watch. Because how many times we go to tournaments and they're like, oh, I didn't even know this tournament was all the time. I mean, like, yeah, and I'm not even really like the, the, the doubles guy, but when you tell me the story about Segment and, and Tor Hatch, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, like that's makes you want to follow them, like see yeah. what's going to happen next. So I feel like a lot of it is storylines. So I'm, and I'm sure that there are cool storylines. Like they've been highlighting Bopana being like the oldest number one in the world. Mm-hmm. So I think you can lean into different things, and I'm yeah. sure that 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 stuff would garner attention. Like when you had Kokinakis and Kiri was playing at the Australian Open, that got a lot of attention. So I think there are things to lean into that, for whatever reason, they don't. Yeah, um, I don't know if it's just. It's funny because, yeah. like even myself, I don't like as a doubles player, I don't follow that much doubles. So like when I'm practicing with 
for example, I'm pricing with Nadal Vesov this morning, and obviously he's top 50, so he's talking about, like, when we're doing drills, he's talking about teams. He's talking about, like, yo, I'm playing this team, this is what this team does, I'm playing this team, this is what this team does, mm -hmm. and you can hear in the conversations with him the storylines. Mm -hmm. Like, he's telling me, yo, we played this team here, and all they did was on the returns they lobbed, and then the ball would bounce, we would hit a swing in, like a, a first ball. By that time, both guys are halfway in. They're not fully in because they don't want to get lobbed back, so they're halfway in, but they're okay with that. Play the first volley from the service line and playing in. And then they're like, oh, so we adjust. The next time we play them, they lob us. We don't let it bounce. Mm -hmm. We kill them. You know, so like even then, they have their little storylines of like tactics and, and matchups and when they played each other. And I wonder if it talks so much about, oh, you think this person, this team's going to break up? You think they're going to play? Yeah. Uh, at this tournament together like there's so much of those storylines I wonder maybe... they should have added that element to the break point like, what doubles yeah it, it would have been interesting like yeah. like like I said I I understand tennis like meaning it's not the easiest sport to follow mm -hmm. like I'm I'm guilty of it like if I'm if I have a doubles match to watch or Sinner Djokovic I'm watching Sinner Djokovic, Djokovic over the doubles match you know what I mean like it is more entertaining for sure like I don't I don't think there's many people that would say doubles is more entertaining than singles, but like it still is entertaining. But that's also you know? storyline and history. Correct. Correct. So like, yeah. like maybe not into the details that how Alex is because he's in it and he's like problem solving to beat these teams. So his storyline is going to be different. But like, there still are storylines in this. You know, like like you said the Bupana thing or even Segerman. Like, they have a hundred points from anywhere else because they won a round. Mm -hmm. Take away that 100 points, they moved on from 130. I don't know where they would be. Like, they are not, they need help. And they went 42 and 3 last year. If a team 42 and 3 needs help to break through, like, I don't know, I don't understand. Like, the yeah, system might not what be, are you, what are we doing? Might not be the best. What are we doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, that is rough. So, like I said, we need to win some matches, me and Josh, need to get it going. Speaking of storyline, that movie coming out, bro, um, Challengers with uh, Zendaya. Should we watch that, you think? But is that a tennis movie or it's is it a tennis like, movie, bro? No, no. Is it a tennis movie or is it a love movie or something that has to do with Tor tennis? through the sto the Yeah. The lens I of thought tennis. I thought that's what it is. I thought it's like a I know there's tennis playing in it and she breaks her leg or something. It's a tennis movie. It's she becomes a coach or something. I think we should review it. Um, I don't know. You guys let us know if that's what you want to see us review the movie i don't know how I am for that. we should go watch it and review i was i will say that the this channel we should go watch it on friday on friday you leave saturday right <laughs> i don't know i will say that this chat this channel has been a lot of um like i said experiments like yeah. trying different things like we tried not tried but we still do it like the racket reviews mm -hmm. and now we have this video with josh and Ella kim that's doing well so maybe we do some more of these ones yeah. And we tried to do, like, some tennis videos of us training and that sort of stuff. So, I guess you guys, if you're still watching, it's been over an hour now, so we'll wrap it up. But, like, if you're watching, let us know uh, what kind of content you would like to see. Um, feel free to go through our Instagram, go through our shorts on YouTube and our, like, our different playlists on YouTube. Like I said, if you're new, welcome. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Oh, before we go, um, Pro Stringer, we have a deal with Pro Stringer also. Hundred dollars off if you use code change over in the shop. This is my machine. Uh we've been using this since before COVID, I think. Yeah, three so oh, no. it's been yeah, it's four years. Huh? Yeah, it's been a while of us using this. Paid off pretty quick, saves money, you can travel with it. This is the whole reason why we have it travel with it on the road. And also we have clothes. Uh you can't really see it in this or that in the camera angle. But we have some clothes. Yeah, check out the description down below. Um, we have dry fits, we have hoodies, hoodies all over. So these are the kind of things you can do to support us. Um, so yeah, like hope you guys enjoyed the, the episode. Feel free to support if you like it. And I mean, above everything, the biggest thing you guys can do is just engage with us as much as possible. Comments, um, likes, share, subscribe, all this stuff. We saw like, actually, I don't know if I told you this in the last few weeks, it's been above 80 percent of the people who watch our videos have not been subscribed to us so we have a lot of people watching our videos who are not subbed so yeah if you're not subbed sub to the channel please and send it to people make sure all your tennis people are subbed to the channel we have been growing a lot and yeah we can't thank you guys enough for that so yeah we also 
there's this college recruiter thing that we started working with. Recruiters, if you go on their site and you're looking to go to school or, you know, for someone who's trying to go to school, you can go there. And if you want to buy anything on that site, you can use our code as well, the same code, changeover. I think you get 10% off anything on that site. And I was just curious, like, we have some old used rackets and stuff. Would anybody be interested in buying stuff from us that we've used before? He thinks no. I think maybe. Uh, let us know. And maybe we can do some something fun with that auction or some, some sort of giveaway. Uh, yeah. Peace and love.